I, yellow cars should be destroyed, all of them, one way or another. Uh, well, he just, he just killed a lot of school children in buses. It's what you've been waiting all week for. It's that moment where everything becomes meaningful and fulfilling. It's car and drivers window shopping. Welcome to window shop with car and driver. What, what, what? I was gonna, I don't get to say your name. Oh, sorry. I, I want a li like 10% less Radio Pearly, but Radio Pearly is good. He's engaged. <laughs> He's not on his phone trying to buy Hot Wheels. I don't buy Hot Wheels. I'm a seller, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. It's time once again for window shopping. That moment in your week when everything becomes meaningful and fraught with fun. Here's your host, Tony Caroga. Hi, welcome to Window Shop with Car and Driver. This is the weekly show where car and driver editors, staffers, and contributors gather to shop for cars online based on a challenge. This week's challenge uh, comes from one of our viewers. It's a great suggestion. And we are looking for cars that we missed out on buying. So we didn't buy them and we have regretted it ever since. Uh, this week, we're joined by Road and Track uh, Senior Editor, Mr. John Perley Huffman, uh, Director of Video, Mr. Carlos Lago, Senior Editor, Alana Schur, and Jonathan Ramsey, our contributor, joins us again. Uh, Perley, you want to kick it off? I do. Um, I tend to have shop for the same cars over and over again whenever I go shopping for vehicles. In 1999, I'm always cross-shopping Toyota trucks and Honda Civics. Honda Civic SI or Toyota Tundra. Those are the only things I ever end up buying. And so in 1999, I was cross-shopping cross -shopping the Tundra and a Honda Civic SI of that year. And I ended up buying the Tundra. And the, the, hold, on, uh, hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love this story, but I, I just... you. You shop for the same two cars, and there's there's one you missed. There's one you, you regret not buying. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, the same I, I, two cars I, I, for decades. Well, Jonathan, there were two, and he bought the other one. Right. <laughs> well, exactly. That's true. I bought the other one, and and the thing is, is that I what I should have done was if I'd been smart, if I'd been smart, I would have bought both because they were both cheap, and because uh, I could have bought both for about forty thousand dollars, and I ended up buying one for twenty four thousand dollars, which was the truck. And I missed on a Civic Si, oh. and I and I would love to have this car. I love these little cars. They're not fast. They're light. They're fun. They're easy. They're great on gas mileage. They have the V6. Through the photos. This one. And I you, find you regret not buying this because of the investment, or because you actually want wished you had been able to drive it. Both. I, th these are cars I really like driving. Oh, those it's, seats are and, awesome. I yeah. mean, so is that a car that you, I like that you cannot get now. I mean, this is a bring a trailer auction. So I'm assuming it's like and this seven times yeah, yeah. as much as you would buy them anywhere else. These cars are impossible to find in really decent shit. This one was, this one only had 5,600 miles on it. Sold for $50,000, which is ridiculous. Insane. And I think it would go for even more now. I mean, that is a bigger car. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and these cars were, I, I think, I don't know if anybody else has driven. I know Tony has, but um, they're not fast, but they're wonderful. Well, the red line's eight grand. They only made this one for two years, right, Pearly? Uh, two, 1999 and 2000. You right. can only get them in three colors, red, black, or I think the signature color is this blue. And it's fantastic color. Yeah. It's a cool color. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I had my way, if I'd, if, I'd done, if I'd done this correctly. Wait, Pearly, yeah, don't scroll through the small photos. There. If I'd done this correctly, I would have bought both. <laughs> I would have bought Donovan. I'm just happy he's scrolling. Oh, original tires. As original, this one has 50, well, this one sold like two years ago for like fifty thousand dollars because I couldn't find any decent ones. But also, that can't be good. The original tires. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> if you take it to a show, it's original. Yeah. This, this is not. Yeah, this one also has an aftermarket radio, which I wouldn't want. I wanted the original Honda radio in here, but you know, it's only got fifty six hundred miles on it. That's so cool. But it's sold. How much horsepower? And These are like 160 or so horsepower. Only 160 horsepower, which is yeah, at 7,999 RPM. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It trails with off the torque, after with that. the torque peak at like 6,800 RPM and a torque peak of six. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it was, it was as, as I once wrote in a story about these. I said your uh, little sister gave uh, more torque than a titty twister. So. so. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah this is this is uh the vtec yo this is, yeah. That, yeah. This is that car yeah yeah this so is why it. why this in the in the slow car fast or it, is this slow car fast yeah pretty much 
It's got a DC. It has a DC. DC, it has, a DC it has a DC crossbar. Sort of. I remember. I remember DC Sports. When I was working for Sport Compact, we used to go over and deal with those guys all the time. Is that aftermarket? It's yeah. aftermarket, but that's it's it's just bolt on thing. You can bolt it, take it right off, and it, and the the it's the rear one. It's the ties together. Yeah. The back. yeah. Per- Pearly, what um, what? So you ended up buying a Tundra, is that right? Instead yeah. of this. Yeah, um, I, <laughs> please I, don't get him started on Tundra. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I still have the Tundra. <laughs> um, so so the the car that you actually missed out on, um, how similar was it to this one that you're showing us? Like identical, identical to this car. Because you were going to buy it new, right? You were going to buy, buy it new. new. Yeah. I oh, buy I see. It. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I would have bought. I would have bought. Uh, the, the only thing I resent was not taking the plunge and just buying them both. Oh, so how much was, was it really when it was new? Was new. Go yeah. back. Go ahead. Seventeen thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars. But why didn't you do it? Because it was that was forty thousand uh, dollars. Buying the Tundra and the Civic together would have been forty thousand dollars, which now but, looks ridiculous. Like a ridiculous. Why didn't you do buy. it then? Look, I don't know if anyone knows that Pearly gave away one fifty grand at a casino and gave it all away. Now, it's according to the tax man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, I, I no, I want I want a I want a I want a poker tournament, and I I uh, I split the I split the. I split the winnings at the end because I didn't. I didn't want. I wanted everybody to be happy. But <laughs> did, uh, you, well, did you money, wear any sort of like problem? Yeah. What? Really, when you were playing poker, do you put on any sort of look to intimidate the competition, <laughs> or you just go as is? Uh, you know, you don't think I'm intimidating? <laughs> no, I, I think you are actually. <laughs> well, I think I think they're more like I'm not going to get beat by the homeless guy, so we don't have to worry about him. <laughs> That's how he sneaks up on him. Yeah. You're yeah. way smarter. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're way smarter than me. Uh, you know, no, I, you're I'm, way smarter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I fake it. I, I love these cars. I've owned, uh, I've owned three other SIs, but this is the one that got away because this is the SI. This is one of the SIs I always wanted. My favorite SI is actually the 2008 SI that I had, but this one's close second. And I like that I would have kept it forever, just like I kept my truck forever. Yeah. These are cool. the, the so- shifter on the dash, right? I'm sorry, what? It had 2008 had the shifter on like the center of the dash. No, that's that was the uh, 2005. Oh, okay. yeah, that was 02 to 05. That was the one that came after this one. Yeah, and that wasn't as good. It wasn't as good. The 2000, 2006 to 2011 was a really good car. It had the eight grand uh, K series engine, which was actually better than the. It was a two liter instead of a one six. Yeah, these are rare, Pearly. They, I yeah. mean, they were only around for two years. Limited production, rare, uh, unique color. You couldn't get this color on the regular Civic. Isn't this the Civic generation that went away from? Um, the uh, the double wishbone front suspension, the A arm control arm front suspension. Uh, so it was the it was the um, or was next, it the generation before this one? Was it the next generation? It was the next generation? Was it the next generation? Not this one. This yeah, one the one the, the new generation started in two thousand one. This right. one went away from this one. Uh, they used to have forged links in the back in the previous generation. The forged links in the back, and they just went to stamp links. Oh, is that what the difference was? Yeah, there? and uh, then the uh, next one was they went to the uh, McPherson struts, and that car that car was not available. That coupe wasn't available as an SI. That's when they had the hatchback SI that came it with the shifter on the dash. Right, right, and right. The, the made in England car. The made in England car, and then the 2006 came out with the that one was that was a special car. Okay. Well, thank and, you, Burley, for preparing so well this week. Well done. I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just here for I'm just here I'm just here for the praise. <laughs> Aren't we all <laughs> I'm trying to give you positive reinforcement? Okay. I'm seeing if positive reinforcement works. Thanks, Pop. I really appreciate it. <laughs> all right, um, Alana, you want to go next? Sure. Okay. So um, this is a little bit of a multimedia presentation, and I do have to give you a little backstory. Um, <laughs> 15 seconds of music if you have music. No, there's no music. (laughs) But yeah, only 15 seconds. That was last week. It's just the Go-Go's. I'm just going to play that Go-Go song for you guys again. (laughs) You didn't appreciate it enough. Um, So my first automotive writing job was at Hot Rod Magazine. So it was mostly classic cars, uh, but we were just starting to cover new cars. And the one of the very first new cars that I did a story on um, was the uh hold on i've got to get this now now i don't know how to do the technology actually just forgotten i've forgotten everything um i'm having yeah you know it's fine don't worry about it um where we are share screen there we go so one of the very first cars that i that i did any sort of new car coverage on um was the viper acr that's right i remember this um yeah and 
Uh, I liked it so much that I wrote a story about how if I sold absolutely everything that I owned, I could maybe buy one, but I would have to live in it and it would be something like this. Um, and then we... Uh, and that is you, not a paid model? On that, the <laughs> that is very clearly... Well, I mean, technically I was a paid model um, since I was paid and I did it. How did but, you get up there? <laughs> um, like off of the bumper. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, How did it feel when you were up there? Did it feel stable? Um, so it's What are you slanted. suggesting, Tony? What are you suggesting? Nothing. I mean, I don't know. I've never been with, up with the amount of weight a Viper wing can handle. What are you suggesting? Um, oh, I, a thousand I pounds. Never a thousand pounds of downforce, and yeah, uh, exactly. and it was actually suggested to me to do this by the engineer. So please do not yell at me in the comments about it. I do not care. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> It, uh, it's slanted. It's, a, it's wide enough, but it's sort of, it's slanted and like slightly two parts. So the, the thing I was most worried about was actually falling asleep and rolling into the back window. Oh, that <laughs> but, well, well, uh, but, it's a, but it's an adjustable wing. So couldn't you, you adjusted it for comfort as opposed to downforce? Um, you know, they weren't either. really thinking about like hospital cot when, when they were doing this. So it doesn't go totally flat. Yeah, it's so not a Viper's thing. Sleep, sleep number. You know, yeah, sleep I, I, I'm, I'm going to go, go out on a limb. Did Wes Allison shoot this? <laughs> no, this is a Larry Chen photo. Okay, Larry Chen, okay. That's a fantastic photo. It's a good photo. Um, it's a really good shot. Thank you. It was, it was a great experience. So uh, at no point could I have ever afforded the ACR. So that is not one that got away because it wasn't even close. But... Um, Soon after Hot Rod, I was working for Roadkill and they had a 2015 Viper GT, um, which they destroyed. Actually, to be fair to them, they didn't destroy it. Some like high up exec uh, blew it up by not noticing the check engine light for like two weeks. And so it got an engine swapped in it. And so then it was just sitting around because nobody really wanted it or liked it. And so... <laughs> I just started driving it as my perk for being the editor of Roadkill Magazine. And I drove it for like six months. Like basically it was my daily driver for the whole time that I was working for that magazine. And here's the multimedia part. It was um, this car. What did you spend in fuel? I mean, less than I was spending driving my 440 Challenger, which was my ultimate <laughs> car at the time. Yeah, so, I, forgot, I forgot who I was talking to. First. <laughs> I guess like 21 miles per gallon. It was fine. People were always like, oh, you know, wasn't it uncomfortable? Wasn't it? I'm like, dude, this is the most modern car I've ever driven. Yeah. So eventually they ended up um, giving that car away in a raffle or something. But before that, there was the possibility of someone maybe buying it. I think people bought some of the other cars that they had. And I have always regretted that I did not put my name in to purchase that car because um, as soon as I no longer had it, I missed it. I, I literally cried when I had to turn it back in. So um, this is what we're looking at now to, to pick up the same car. You know what the buyout price was or the, the offered price? No, but it, I mean, it couldn't have been much. I mean, they were only like 80 grand new and this thing had like a swapped out engine. And at the time, the, um, the, the change in mindset about the Viper hadn't happened yet. So people were still thinking of them as like not a good car. Like people hadn't realized how good the fifth gen was and no one had got nostalgic for the like aggression right. of the earlier generation. No, no so one had realized, cheap. yeah, no one had realized that there would never be another one either. Yeah. Yes, yeah so it's um, kind. And, and I like the 2015, it was the, they brought back the actual Viper badge. You know, the, the fifth gen before that did not actually say Viper anywhere on the car. Oh, I didn't know. And um, I'm going to claim some credit for that because I did write an article where I said, absolutely no one knows what this car is. It should probably say what it is on it. And then the very next year, they put the Viper badge back on. Uh, so that's my badge. Like that, that girl who slept on our car yeah. said we should put a badge <laughs> on it. <laughs> so... Um, no, I, I think I, I haven't been paying that much attention to Viper values, but it seems like people are finally realizing, it, especially oh, the later finally. Vipers. They started going up to like 2014, and they have not stopped going up since. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is 134,000, 135,000. Yeah. Um, I love. It, it's I, not like it's like a, as almost as basic as you could have gotten one. So this is almost exactly the same as the the Roadkill car. Um, I think it's Adrenaline Red. And this is a gray interior. I think that was a tan. How many miles on this beast? Um, 
4583. Yeah. yeah. New car, basically. I love the shifter on these. They're set sort of high on the console, and you feel like the rat fink drawing. Yeah, I mean, it's like this big. It's like a baseball. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. And I actually, I was once talking to one of the engineers about that because I was like, you know, um, like, I, I have to, like, two-hand that shifter. It's ridiculous. And he's like, yeah, well, you know, or, there was a whole discussion for a while where it was just like, oh, you know, performance car, the big, the shifter ball has to be bigger. The bigger the power, <laughs> the bigger the shifter ball has to be. I love the tail lights on them. Um, I just, I think it's that such a car. It's a yeah, great this one they did the later mod. This one they did the later tail lights because I mean they carried the original uh, Viper tail lights. I think through the first like three cars. I mean they had the same the original tail lights on them. Mm. I, it, I carry so a piece of Viper with of... me. Recognize that? Is that a grill? Oh, a speaker grill? That's a hood vent. Oh um, wow. That flew, the removable flew off. Left, right? It flew oh. off of a Viper I was driving. <laughs> well, they are removable. <laughs> Sometimes on their own. <laughs> yeah. Er early That's Vipers cool. Early Vipers were some of the worst built cars I've ever driven. Just yeah, like terrible. Wait, what year was that Viper, Carlos? Do you remember? Uh, this was would have been 2015, 2016. Yeah. One, of our yeah. former, one of our former testers also had an exciting Viper test story. Aaron Robinson was used to driving cars with anti-lock brakes. Aaron who? Aaron oh. Robinson. Uh, and the, the the early Vipers didn't have any lock brakes, and he went to do our 70 to 0 test and just flat spotted all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so they had to drive it back to LA, like just the... <laughs> um, when I did a story around the time that I had this, where I did a ride along in a traffic helicopter, um, and I had driven this to the you know, to the airport to meet up with the heli helicopter guys. So we, he gave me the ride in the helicopter and then I let him drive the Viper around. And the next week it rained, it just was pouring. And the, and the pilot sent me a text of, uh, he's like, yeah, we're flying over a crashed Viper right now. And then I was like, I know who did that. <laughs> like I know that guy, it was a press car. It was on the local news. I remember seeing Who that. was it? Who was it? Who was it? I can't remember now, but. It wasn't Rob Canaan, was he? No, he did that earlier, much earlier, and I think it was on track. Okay. No, I, Rob, I was with Rob when he wrecked two of them. Yeah, I mean, they they got wrecked a lot, and uh, and I understand it. I mean, I this generation, I think, does not meet the the fearsome reputa reputation no, of the no. earlier ones. No, like, no, it's it was, got ABS and stability like it, control. This car was a great car. Like I never yeah. had any problem driving it. I drove it in all kinds of weather. That ACR I drove in Detroit in a in like a giant thunderstorm and that was fine too so it's i drove amazing. one from la to vir wow yeah, i remember yeah. that and you still have your hearing you know I, I could go into great detail about that but maybe another time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i went on the press launch at vir um and they had like local instructors riding along with us and i've driven at vir quite a bit and so i talked to the instructor and i said you know i know this track pretty pretty well but you know if you get nervous just let me know but um, I can't remember, somebody sent an IndyCar driver who had driven an IndyCar and he scared the instructor so bad. Because <laughs> the instructor had no idea who the person was and didn't he didn't introduce himself and put them at <laughs> ease. Got him and sent it. Yeah, he just got in and was started going quickly and, and the instructor like freaked out and left, left the program. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, God, I, he must have, Indy, who, which IndyCar driver was it? I can't remember. Alex, uh, something. Um, well, those instructors are brave and very helpful. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So when I get in a car with an instructor, I try to put them at ease immediately. Yeah. yeah. Well, I try to scare them good. This was like 600 horsepower, 650, 645. 45. They got five extra horses. That's a cool car. No, well, it's, it's, not just, it's not just the horsepower. This, this thing just had mountainous amount of torque. Yeah, 8.4 liter, right? Yeah, it had basically all the torque that was missing from your SI. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With interest. <laughs> Inflation. <laughs> This is like torque bookends so far. So this, is, this, is like, this is like, you know, you could have come up with two cars that were on the opposite end of the spectrum more than going from my Civic Si to her Viper GT. And both of you worked at Hot Rod at one point. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, it, was, it was interesting. I was just thinking about my Tundra. The only, I remember getting oh, into God. I'll forget it. I'll talk about that later. 
<laughs> anyway, that, that's what I think about every day. I wake up in the morning thinking about this car. I go to sleep at night thinking about this car. So, I check wait, so prices could, on them every day. They continue. would have been a great investment. Would have been a great investment. Yeah. It would have been, um, yeah, it would have been a marvelous last five years or whatever it was. So if anybody wants to purchase one for me, I, I would be glad to uh, <laughs> accept that. Thank Wait, you do, you, do you want the black wheels or do you want regular black wheels. wheels? Yeah, I like the black wheels. You like the black wheels, okay. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, Carlos. So I have, I was debating between two cars. So I'm gonna start with the first one that I wanted to go with, which doesn't have as strong of an argument for the requirement, which was <laughs> a car you, you missed out on. Wait, uh, so you have multiple cars to present? <laughs> I, 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 I just wanna show off a little different. <laughs> the Ferrari 400i because I could have bought one because there was a time when you could get one of these for like $25,000. Yeah, recently, yeah. very recently. Now you can't. <laughs> Now a manual 400i based off this ad is $170,000. And, you know, when you're buying a Ferrari, you could get, you know, one of the more iconic ones, but I just think these things look so cool. I know they're miserable to drive, never driven one, but as just a something to tootle around town with, this thing would be very yeah, cool. B12. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, Thunder, it's, it's Ferrari's Thunderbird. <laughs> I, would, I would love one of these. Yeah, kind um, of. But this is not my car. My oh, car... Okay. Is, I like the, oh. is a Porsche 944. Oh, glutton for Turbo. Pattern, huh? And the wow. story behind this is uh, I almost bought one. Uh, so in college, I worked at uh, CarMax. And when you work at CarMax, you get access to their wholesale lot. Girl you can buy any house. vehicle. In the, what's that? Roll through the photos. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in any, it, uh, when you work at CarMax, you can buy any vehicle in their wholesale lot. And their wholesale lot are cars that people have come in and just sold to CarMax. Somebody came in one time circa 2006 or seven and sold the 1986 or seven nine, uh, 944 turbo. Mm -hmm. And I could have bought it for like $4,000. But as a broke college kid, <laughs> that, that we get into why I couldn't do it. So one of the things is you may get access to the wholesale lot, but you're not supposed to drive any of the vehicles, you know, because that gives an unfair advantage to you as a buyer. So, of course, the first thing I did was drive it and realize the clutch was going out, needed a new clutch. So then I went home and started doing research on clutch replacement on a 944 Turbo. Uh, now, circa 2022, we have all the prices and timing and stuff broken down very clearly. But could you imagine a college kid taking on a 30-hour clutch replacement that could cost up to $2,100 in his parents' garage? Did you have a garage? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Where would you yeah. be doing this work? Yeah. Also, look at the, the, the cost of getting a new clutch kit. You know, uh, one from Socks is $743. One from Porsche was $1,800. Yeah, that's pricey. Right? I mean, so, that's, the, that's the problem with so many of these cars. Even with the Viper, when I had it, the only problem I ever had while I, while I had it was a nail in a tire, which we were able to patch. But, like, the tires alone were, like, $600 a piece. I yeah. That. And the, I mean, Tony hasn't said it yet, but none of the Porsche crests on the wheelchair <laughs> cast. Are there <laughs> also, this one's on, this one's on all leaders. seasons. This one's so, on Michelin's, but they're all seasons. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah. These are these are. I, I mean, you know, they, they are ridiculous nightmares. Every Porsche is a ridiculous nightmare when it comes to actually servicing. But they're wonderful. Not every cars. They are wonderful cars to drive. If anything yeah. goes wrong, certainly. And, also, and, this is one of the coolest. They also uh, have Porsche some of the best tail lights. Really, really good tail lights. I love mm. that. Like this is a cool car. Lock, totally cool Rubik's car. Cube. Well, as if we, we've had nine forty fours on here before, and the thing is, is that when you stand up next to them now, they seem incredibly tiny. They're yeah. small. Yeah. Incredibly small. This one's got the Fuchs too. That's cool. Yep. I love those yeah. ones. Yeah. I just know, know, incredibly I small curly. It's, it's also got it's also got my, you know, it's also got the the classic Porsche door handles that you open up, you know, the the, the you old mean Volkswagen door handles. Door handles? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, well they feel like well that's how I always felt like Porsche's door handles are Volkswagen door handles, but they felt well, right. On the 944 they are. They're Volkswagen door handles or Audi door handles. It felt like 911 door handles, which were the same thing, I guess. No, no, no. And I don't know. Those are different, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Well, maybe and lastly, because we raised the price, um, that's why I went to bring a trailer because I was like, "Hey, we could we could spend some money on this, and it's actually for sale too." So you but could have spent twenty three nine. Wow, I could have bought this, this in two thousand six or seven for four thousand dollars. <laughs> what do you wow. think this will go to, Carlos? Just under thirty or so, or thirty? 
three days left in 2022 in February 2022. This will probably be a million dollars in three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, or Carlos, you could today. always get you could pick up a second job at CarMax again. Tell them, look, I I've already I'm already in the system. <laughs> you want to? Uh... I thought I thought CarMax wasn't CarMax that stuff you put on your lips. Yep, oh, it is also it's that. Carmex. I think that's actually CarMax. But um, oh, is that CarMax? Okay. Carlos, have um, do you know the photographer Sid Cummings? Have you seen her 944? It's no. like she did it up with the Apple graphics. Um, I gotta look at that. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty great. I just what are drove... Apple graphics. Hold on, I'll see if I can find it. From the race car. I just drove a 944. Um, they never imported it into the States, but it's like 944S spec. So 247 horsepower instead of your 208. And in a convertible. And I drove that and it kind of cured me of wanting one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when did you drive it? Right? What's that? When did you drive it? Uh, in December. Oh, well, I mean, now it wouldn't stand up. But you think if you had driven it at the time? Oh, if I'd driven it at the time, it would have been unbelievably quick. But now you drive it and you're like, eh, it's not that exciting. It handles okay, but it just doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a modern sports car at all. And it's a cool experience, but it also I was it was a don't meet your heroes, like you said, Carlos. And Carlos, did you actually did you want that car before it showed up in the lot, or was it, oh my God, here's a Porsche and I can well, so when I was working at CarMax, I was just kind of buying cars and flipping them on the side. So a car would come in. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, I could probably buy it, you know, tootle around in it for a couple months and then sell it and either make a small profit or break even on all costs. So for me, it was a way to churn through cars. Uh, and so any car that came in that looked interesting, I would jump, I would try to get into. So I went in through, I didn't buy all these, but there was a 944, there was a 300ZX Twin Turbo, there was a Mark IV GTI, Integra GSR. So like all like the cool cars that were around that time, I was able to not if, if not buy then at least get into an experience what were some that you bought and sold uh the gti and uh the integra and the 328 is e36 328 is um those those stand out you know i, I was just at uh, i was taking my dog for a walk this morning at uh, the there's a bmw um, horse shop near where i get coffee every morning there's a tundra story and, coming up i definitely <laughs> there's a 968 there a 968 with a centrifugal supercharger on it and I thought that would be an interesting car to try because, you know, it's a 968, which means it has the three liter four, has a three liter four with a, with a supercharger on it. And I just thought that was, that may, that may have been more interesting than the 944 turbo. There, thank you very much. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was Love it. Here, so Carlos, the, uh, I saw a car oh, today that was more interesting than your car. <laughs> just so you know. Can you That's guys so uh, cool. Can you That's see rad. that? Yeah. Hmm. So. That's really cool. Who's is that? Sid Cummings. So uh, your friend Sid on Instagram. You should follow her. She does great, very fun car photography, and um, she has uh, a terrible 944 that spent a lot of time in my in my driveway once. We um, should have her on Window Shop. We should totally have her on Window Shop. All right. I mean, are we allowed to have more than one woman on Window Shop? Can we do like two on the same show, or is it like Highlander where there can only be one? <laughs> well, talk to HR. Take talk, talk to HR. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alana. Uh, th and thank you, Carlos. Uh, Mr. Ramsey, you're up. Um, uh, well, I would. I need to protest first that the uh, parameters of this were changed <laughs> this morning by people who are cheating to win. So if I don't win, we know why. I just want to get that out. You, you, know, you know, Jonathan, you know, Jonathan it's, just stop feigning your shock at this. You know it's going to happen. Not, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not. Pearly, you know I'm with you. I'm not feigning shock. I'm just letting the world know what's really happening behind the right. scenes. You could have gone, gone four and one for the year. No, Tony, Tony, <laughs> star, Tony Kuroga has now become the Jack Berry of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of, of Fosha. He's, he's cheating it up to make it more dramatic. This That's the, all there is to it. Sixty-four thousand dollar question of car oh, okay. podcasts. What you can't see under Jonathan's hat is all the tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> the voices I hear, they're the truth. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, and I would also like to point out: so the this uh, C4S uh, 2004 was actually. Wait, well, I'm looking at a TR6. I'm looking at yeah. a TR6. Oh, you're pointing Ooh, to that. But, I, but, I, but I, want to, I want to mention, actually, so this Mercedes was six grand. In that's, a t that's a triumph, sir. That's a triumph. No, he's pointing at the car behind him. Over his shoulder. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's all right. I was confused, too. I'm lost. I'm you, not just, you just assume that he's wrong, which I mean, about, fair, yeah, but about, he's I'm not. I'm just talking about the triumph. 
on the screen then. How about that? Uh, Thank you. So, <laughs> well, he's putting it on a car that nobody, I, all I see is the screen. No, I know. So Curly, know. it's okay. Know. I'm sorry. Really? I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry. Really, I'm just happy you're not selling Hot Wheels during the show. <laughs> if it keeps going like this, I'm, gonna ha I'm going to. <laughs> um, I'll make it quick, Burley, and be out of your way. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> so when I was a wee lad in Columbus, Indiana, uh, before I was legal to drive, there was a guy not far on the way to school who had um, one of these, and it was also four thousand um, dollars. But it needed a ton of. I got to know how much it needed. It was one of those cars. You're like, oh, that's going to be an issue. And I did not get it, and I've regretted it ever since high school. Is this your car? Well, no. The uh, the one in the yard was like the color of a of a rotted pear, um, and uh, like British it, racing rust. It boned, <laughs> yes, yeah. and it needed. I mean, who knows what? It probably needed new everything. Um, so That's, these are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know what's always interesting me about the body of these cars is you know the center section is the same as a TR4 or a TR250, which is a five, and then they just put Michelotti, I think, did the body. Yep. For the exactly. front, of the, front and the tail, they redid it, and it's amazingly how much better the redesign came out looking. It just, I mean, they just really flattened the front and back. Fashion. It still looks, it still looks contemporary. I think it's, it's one of the best looking, best looking British sports cars. Yeah, the ever. proportions are awesome. It looks great on those red lines too. Yeah. Are those, uh, are they 13 or 14 inch wheels? 14s, aren't they? I think they're 14s. It's amazing how big they look because the car is right. so small. Like that profile shot, like they looked giant. <laughs> the, you know, they're, 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 not, they're not great cars, but they're great to look at. No, yeah, they, they aren't cars. Especially the, the U.S. cars had, um, the U.S. cars were carbureted. The uh, U.K. cars had Lucas Injection. So the UK, the US cars, I think it had 105 horsepower from a 2.5 liter, I think 2.5 liter six, straight six. Um, the U, the Europe cars had 150, but you had the Lucas injection to deal with. So it was gonna be a mess either way and then some, but I love them, I still do. And I still have to get one. And this was also, I think uh, Tears for Fears had just- um, Look at that, Look that the frame, that the frame is yeah. such a hack job. Oh God! What are you talking about? I mean, it's look crazy. at how it's it's made out. Look like it's made out of angle iron. I mean, it's just oh, like so. It's so 1950s. I mean, these were inexpensive cars. I know. I'm just saying. Is I'm just I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying. It just so primitive. Yeah, it is primitive for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, are you gonna be okay, Burley? I'm. 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 I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, pictures of tundras. <laughs> exactly. I, I, we should compare it to a tundra frame to see. What <laughs> Or a seven liter galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's never so, living that one down. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, only, the only thing I always got about these wheels is they've got like the deepest dish trim ring I've ever seen on a wheel. Okay. Then, the, That's the, deep. It is. It is deep. I don't know if it's that deep. That's also, a pretty good <laughs> offset. It's pretty deep for a little wheel. Like Chicago pizza yeah. style. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. These are like five, they're probably five inches wide, and that that inside. Oh, right. Oh, and the wheel, yeah, the wheels are so small. Yeah, so yeah. cool. Yeah, the trim, the trim uh, rings, the trim rings are just yeah, amazing. Still a great and, part. Are you gonna let Jonathan present Kate uh, Pearly? No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, please. <laughs> I was having a good time <laughs> taking the ride. Yeah. So, but Jonathan, I mean, if you if you did have this car again today, I mean, because one of the things with regrets about not buying a car or when people say they regret selling a car especially if it was like from a really long time ago i'm always like well, what would you have like what would have happened over all of the time since then right like would you have <laughs> moved it to all of the different places that you live would you have you know oh, would you well, have been restoring it would you have been driving it would it have just been a millstone around your neck it's a great question well, okay there's that's yes albatross is what it would have been and that's part of why I wish I had gotten it. Like, I wish I had gotten just a wreck for in high school um, because it would have it would have taken me years to get it going. And I mean, I would have turned into like Captain Ahab and this would have been my, my white whale. <laughs> well, but, or you, you could have been like a totally different person now. Like it might have like oh, totally. taken you on just oh. like an absolute... Journey. Exactly. This this would have been like my Back to the Future experience. I would be a completely different Biff 
if I had had this <laughs> instead of instead of the Ford Festiva or Volkswagen Passat that I, that I, I want to see alternate universe TRX. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what would have happened. That. This is a, a great concept look. for a show. <laughs> I imagine he's almost the same, but he has a beard and a pipe. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, I, I always see it as like every John Hughes movie, the, uh, the asshole is the one who drives this car. You know, it's the guy in high school who shows up and, and disappoints Molly Ringwald. In a sports car. True. But I never, yeah. I never had to worry about being that guy <laughs> where, where I grew up and the stuff I did. Jonathan but would here. never, ever disappoint Molly Ringwald. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why. <laughs> that's exactly why. We'd never let her down. How about Ali Sheedy? Would you rather have Molly Ringwald or Ali Sheedy be disappointing? Why, why do you have to choose? Okay, you could disappoint them both. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, like, I would have, I probably, like, if I had had this car in high school, I would not have five cars that need work in my driveway now. Right, you would just have the one. Just the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, probably, yeah, still have that. I mean, I probably would not have kept it, but I would have enjoyed the life out of it, and I, I'd have amazing... No stories about. You wouldn't live in Kentucky. You just live in Tennessee. Like there would just be slight <laughs> butterfly effect differences. Yeah. Boom! Totally one flap of the wings. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready to see the winner? No, no. It's not this. It is. Oh, God, cars. oh wait, hang on. Uh, where's my car? Here it is. <laughs> so I almost bought one of these uh, ten years ago. There was a 60,000 mile 92 911 for $21,000. Wow. And I was moving out to California and I had a Lancia Fulvia at the time. And I was like, well, I got to sell the Lancia to be able to have the money to buy this Porsche. And I was moving and I was like, I, I can't do this. But look at what it's worth now. And it still yes. has four days. Um, 964s were always kind of rare. So they've really jumped in value. And they're sort of the flavor of the month in the 911 air cooled world at the moment. People have sort of caught on to how beautifully built they are. Uh, they're quick, 247 horsepower. Um, but you, but wait, don't you, you want a 993 though, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I eventually corrected my mistake, but it cost me a lot more money. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I feel such muted sympathy for the guy who owns a 993 that he didn't get the 964. Here we go. I mean, wait, you, who cares? Like I, I feel like Singer is the only reason these cars have picked up because yeah. I still feel like they are behind. They're only... They're only ahead of the nine nine three, the nine nine six in terms of the cars people want. You yeah, think? well, I yeah, um, they were for a long time, Jonathan, because they were criticized for the design. Yeah, but I think the rarity has caught up with them, and these ninety twos are really rare. The like ninety two, ninety three, ninety fours are really rare. This one's mm -hmm. got all the right signs. Whoever owned this and prepared this car has done a really amazing job. It's very factory. It's got the N-Spec uh, PS2s, uh, the Michelins. The crests are pointed at the valve stems, <laughs> <laughs> indicating that a Porsche mechanic has worked on it. It's got a rear wiper, which is cool. It's in an interesting color. I like the tan interior. Yeah, look at that. All right, welcome to the anal retentive enthusiast. Yeah, well, I think that indicates a lot more than the, just that. You know, this is what <laughs> drives Porsche values, is originality. Anal and retentiveness. This one has so yes. much originality. Carlos, that. What did he say? You know, you know, ha having said that, my, one of my favorite Porsches of all time is a 964, and that's the Turbo 3.6. We've gone through this before, but do you guys recognize the steering wheel? Yeah, it's the Firebird steering wheel, isn't it? No, that's wrong. <laughs> it's the VW Cabrio steering wheel. Oh, it's the same wheel. No, it's not. Eh, whatever. <laughs> so, so, Tony, I mean, this is a beautiful car, but uh, um, do you think you would be a different person if you had had it? Because you kind of have a have it already no i'd be the same person he's yeah. got like a fancy espresso I, like, I feel like i feel like the drama of of jonathan although i might be person. wait until we get to the bills uh on this car because <laughs> there is there are some eye-opening bills so maybe i wouldn't be the same person i would <laughs> might be a lot poorer uh, <laughs> let's see it's super clean though there are yeah. Many yeah look at i mean they, they have like a, a fact book like it's I, all. Just, I, I just love the graphics of it. They look, I mean, Porsche really did cool looking owner's manuals. How Tony, do you, do you really want this car, like this, or do you, do you just want to be friends with the person who owned it previously? Uh, well, they really get it. Uh, and wait until you see something <laughs> the bill. He's like, hi, I don't want your car. I just want to know what your name is and if you're free for drinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just really want to know that I appreciate what you've done here. Well, this is, this is just you one like service. Our trivia night? Okay, so it had a recent service um, where they did a lot of work. <laughs> the work wow. totals. I don't know. If Good guys, Lord. $28,000? Yeah. And what, yeah. A lot of work. I mean, At a point, though, you, car enthusiasm goes to just car chores, right? <laughs> I can't zoom in on this. How do you zoom in? On, oh, here we go. Exactly. Yeah. So oh, and before that, before. before that, Jonathan, there's an $8,000 bill for suspension <laughs> stuff. So... Granted, if I bought this at twenty one thousand, I could spend all this money in maintenance and upkeep, and still be, uh, you know, still be fine investment wise. Um, but yeah, I mean, to Carlos's point, these things are hideously expensive to keep. Thirteen, thirteen thousand dollars in parts alone. Yeah, I mean, I mean they did. It was like an engine. It was like an engine out reseal. Uh, they did a clutch. Um, there's a separate set of bills for the for um, new shocks, but. They put in like the Porsche stuff. It's all Porsche parts. It's all really done to a high level. It is. And that's that's how you can tell the Porsche person why they're trying to convince you that 30, a 30 grand service <laughs> makes sense. You're still making money on the car, but your margins. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. It's not totally. great. Well, there's a, reason, insurance, there's a reason I, mean, I do a lot of the work on my own car. The, the service alone could buy Jonathan's missed car. Boom. Exactly. But and the are, alcohol, I'd need to get over it. <laughs> but these are quick cars. I mean, uh, 247 horsepower, but it only weighs just over 3,000 pounds. And zero to 60 and this European one. Oh, I can't move this. Hang on. Sorry about this. Ugh. <laughs> Zoom is not interactive. We'll, we'll just have Carlos edit this out whenever he sees it. Yeah, we'll just have Carlos take care of this. You guys assume Hey, Carlos, here's some more much. work for you. Here's some more work for you, Carlos. This is why I never try to zoom in on any of the photos or um, or do anything other than like scroll the one page that I get on screen. Here we go. I got it. Four oh, eight to sixty. Parents. So it's still legitimately quick, like four eight to sixty, thirteen three at one oh six. So it's all it's about as fast as well. This particular test car was as fast as a nine nine three P six. You know, this is this is this is this is like your dream garage, Tony, isn't it? Right next to an Elan. Yes, and then this is the preview of the European Elan from that year. <laughs> That was a good, I like I like that car a lot. The yeah, Elan? Yeah. I had one. I know. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't I really know. want to own it and drive it, but it's I love the look of it. All right, we've now come to the part of the show where we uh, vote on each other's choices and crown a winner. Uh, Mr. Huffman, you went first with the Civic SI. Good choice. I wish you'd bought that. You'd be a happier man. I, I wish car. I had both. I wish I still had that car. No, you wouldn't. No. Okay. <laughs> this is... <laughs> uh, Pirelli, what was your favorite of the uh, all the cars? What do you think was the well, best? The 964 is awfully nice, but it just scares me. And, you know, basically the Viper is a truck engine. And that makes me think that at least you could buy it. I'd vote for the Lana's Viper. <laughs> that, well, how, did you how, how did that reasoning go? I mean, that's not, that's not the... Uh... That's not the selling point I would have used, but I will take any win that I can get. No, no, look, look, the thing, here, here's the thing about Viper. Viper is oh, as, much as, as much as, look, as as fast as it is and everything else like that. It's a very simple car. It's made out of very simple pieces. The end, the transmission is a is basically a TKO. The engine is essentially push rods and is dead right. nut simple. Uh, I mean, the tires are the most expensive thing on the car. The rest of the car is pretty straightforward. Have you and, seen, have you ever held a Viper crank in your hands? Uh, I, so I don't think I don't think I can lift it. I was, you know, they're yeah. huge. They're huge and they're heavy. Well, there's they're also heavy. an unknown cost you are considering the insurance well, premium. Well, yeah, but the, but the Viper, well, the Viper, I, it might remind me. I think they have a. Don't they always like a split journal crank in order to because it's a 90 degree V10, right. and you need to do it like a split journal crank in order to get it not to be just shake itself apart. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they do. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's it's like you know the um, the, the V10 might be enough cylinders that it, it, the the vibration isn't that horrible. I can't. Well, like the three point eight liter. Yeah, the, they they do that on. I know it's a cam and cam on that generation. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's a three, the three point eight liter, uh, the three point eight liter uh, GM V6 was a split journal crank, and that thing just lasted forever. It's nothing matter with split journal cranks. They're just okay. Okay, for, we we need to move on. Okay, thank you very much. That's fine. <laughs> thank day. thank Bye. you for the vote. You no know one also had a split journal crank. <laughs> <laughs> 64 that uh, the Corvair 
Um, <laughs> all right, Alana's uh, 2005 Viper, 100%. That's a great show. Uh, thanks. Thanks, guys. And what's your favorite? Um, you think did the best job, I should say. Well, uh, so, I mean, and that's the thing, right? Because it isn't just the cars. I, I liked all of the cars that were chosen. It's the story because it's the one that got away. And I'm going to have to go with Ramsey on this because his is the one where, like, you know, he was a, he was a youth. It, he never did get the car. The, the version of himself that he would be now if, could be so radically different. The rest of you guys would all be the same guy. You basically got some version of that That's car weird. along the way. But life-changing decision made by Jonathan Ramsey. Yeah, Jonathan, like I, don't, I don't know how different he'd be, though. He might, like, take baths instead of showers. That might be the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big change. I mean, are you, are you, are you you're you doubting the transformative power of the Triumph TR6. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I. How many, how many automotive essays of of the legends of automotive journalism involve a Triumph TR6? All of them, all of them do. So yeah. I think I think Jonathan, I think that Jonathan would have lived for three months longer in Cambodia and two months shorter <laughs> in Thailand. Trying to get away from my car. Yes, yeah. probably. <laughs> All right, Carlos's 944 Turbo. Again, great choice. I mean, I 944 can't... Turbo. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I totally blanked it out because I was so in love with the Ferrari <laughs> that I, I forgot <laughs> that wasn't his car. <laughs> but yeah. So for my choice, so I was I was thinking about the Civic, but then I realized looking at that Porsche, the, the 964, that you're basically doing the same thing at a much lower uh, cost in that you have to be so anal retentive about maintaining that thing in order to maintain its value, but it's such a less expensive car. Same thing with the 964. Like, if you have to worry about the crest facing the valve stems, I'm out. That's way too much work. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That's way too much work. It's not that you have to worry about it. It's just something to look for when you're buying. No, I don't want to feel he judged. He, he, calls. He, he doesn't say this at the Porsche meetings. He <laughs> says it is something you have to worry about. So I don't want to feel judged. On, on the car that I own and enjoy. And uh, so, and Jonathan, your TR6 story is fantastic. And I think those cars look cool. I just can't imagine myself driving one. And I, so my vote has to go to the Viper. Uh, and for two reasons. One is that you don't have to care what other people think when you're driving a Viper because you're driving a Viper mm -hmm. and everybody thinks it's rad no matter what. And mm -hmm. two, I'd spent a lot of time in that car and it, it is one of the cars that I actually do miss and wish it was still around in, in the modern like new car landscape. So Viper gets my vote. Mm. Carlos, right, didn't you drive that car in the tug of war? Yes. Yeah. I've done a lot of Viper stuff. Some of the damage. I was just reflecting on it as you were telling all your stories. I'm like, man, I wish that car still was around. All right, Jonathan. Alana has two. Jonathan has one. Is that right. yeah. Allie? Okay, Jonathan. TR, TR6. Beautiful choice. Great choice. Uh, and now I've got some choices to make about who... Uh, I mean, look at the upside of mine. 21,000 10 years ago. $28,000 in bills, five well, fifths. Whatever. It's still, I'm still $75,000, and that auction's not even over. I love it. So uh, I love how Tony turns into uh, Pearly with the sound to vote. I was like, wait, listen, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. Let me tell another story. <laughs> if, um, if, so if Carlos had gone with the Ferrari, it would have been even closer. But uh, the, the 964, I'm, I'm still not a fan. I like the, the G bodies and the, and the 993s better. Um, and I, yeah, I, the 944, another car of high school days. The, the guy, my first job, the, the owned, restaurant owner had one and loved it. Um, Pearly's Civic, not my thing. If it had been a hatchback SI, totally all for it. Interesting. The Viper is amazing. And I, oh, the Viper, I've only driven the ACR. It was, um, and it, even that, I loved it and drove it every day. Um, and when I would go over certain expansion joints, my, my head would literally hit the ceiling of the, the car but I would still, like, I would literally just put a pillow on the roof there and deal with it because the car was so amazing. And uh, I, I can understand why it's not on the market, and I'm not sad about it not being on the market, but it's, I think it's one of those things where if you can, you have to get one or at least drive one because... It's, it's an experience. Fun. It's Yeah, so Ilana for the win. 
All right, Alana, Thank take you. the win. Dan agrees. I didn't even get a single vote. So, right, how do you guys feel about the nine six four? Remember, yeah, thousand yeah, yeah, dollar yeah, upside. Yeah, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I go like this. The the sixty thousand dollar upkeep, hundred thirty thousand dollar purchase, nine forty nine six four. Well, I mean, if the buy in is twenty one, you know, you have all that potential. You have all that money to spend. It's a money furnace. That thing is just good. You know, you. Would be no, like this is just somebody who's really been over the top on maintenance and preventative and just doing everything right. <laughs> but you you the Porsche that. community. Money furnace. Money furnace. <laughs> nah. There's so much upside and enjoyment there. You it, know, the thing, the thing like, is that you know, when you get right down to it though, it's 130 right now for $120,000. It's a 247 horsepower car. Right. That goes zero to 60 and four eight. But you would take that over Lana's Viper and, and six grand or five oh, yeah. grand? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't like the V10 and the Viper. I don't think it well, sounds good. I mean, that, that just sort of like sums up the difference, though, between Tony and myself anyway, <laughs> right? I mean, like, like given this basically the same amount of money, um, I am a person who will drive a Viper into the ground, and Tony is a person who will take good care of a boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that is exactly, that's a perfect summary of the difference between you two, because I never noticed any difference until now. That was it. That's the only one. Yeah. All right, Pearly, uh, I think I'm going to give you the win on the Civic. Oh, I thanks. Think that's a good choice. I think there was a lot of upside because that was, you know, a $17,000 car that's probably like sixty, seventy thousand 70000 for the low mileage one that you found. Yeah. And I think that's a cool car. 8,000 RPM red line. Yeah, it, 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 it is a cool car. And, you know, thank you very much. I feel I feel this if I'm taking the pity vote, but I'll take it anyhow. I know. This, this week is all about positive reinforcement for your Well, you know, the thing, is, the thing is, these are they're always interesting challenges because, you know, if you're being honest, you're not, your choices are restricted by your life experience. You couldn't, yes. you couldn't just go out and pick out something that you kind of have a fantasy about. You have to actually look back at your life. Okay, that was Because the integrity of window shop wouldn't allow any of us. That's, that's the problem. Is, we, no, I, I agree with you, Pearly. I think it's important. I think, it, I think the truth of it comes through. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh and, you know, and the thing is that I could have had, if, you know, the thing is if I bought that, that Civic SI, there's a good chance I wouldn't have gotten married and I wouldn't have had kids. So there you go. Would have been Pearly, why'd you leave all that out? What? Yeah, that's that's the butterfly effect. Well, you know, the thing is that you know, it's I I bought my truck literally the month I, I got married, and uh, it was it was like if I bought both of those, I wouldn't have been able to afford the wedding. So I would have had to like. Hold you know, on. And you think she, you think she would not have married you if you had said I bought two cars? And Maybe so... she said I bought a Civic instead of a wedding. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a good chance. He said, "Baby, I just need six months <laughs> to get to get these." But well, trust well me. he would also be like, "Don't worry, in twenty years, it's going to be worth fifty, sixty thousand yeah. dollars." Yeah. Well, and and she was like, really? "What about all those Hot Wheels?" <laughs> what, I, I have, a, I have a Hot Wheel that sold for seven, so I can't really say anything else like that. Um, but, I, mean, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything that would have stopped her from marrying you. I think she would have just like if she'd already decided that's not something you're like, "Oh, I didn't know this," so no. You know, it's, it's, I, 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 I think I think looking back on it, there's a lot of moments of time where if my wife had said something, she would have said, maybe I shouldn't go through with this. Maybe there's a problem. I think there's a couple of times she should she would have thought that. The other thing is, you know, I bought my I bought my tundra. I remember getting into an argument with my tundra. Is, is that uh, David Freiberger? Really, really, we got we got to end, buddy. Oh, okay, <laughs> he's not even looking at this show. show. He's just he's talking to himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's his, I am talking to myself. I am. I, I want to hear the story later, though. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. We're going to add um, some people had some great suggestions to add to our Spotify playlist of car songs that we had last week. <laughs> and we'll add that to the Spotify playlist. And um, thanks for commenting. Keep the suggestions coming. And we will see you all next week. Subscribe and like that too. Twice. <laughs> subscribe and like twice. Like once. Subscribe once. <laughs> <laughs> We all know what a horseless carriage is. Had to ride in the back of them with parents that could never give us a satisfactory answer to the question, are we almost there yet? And we longed for the day when we could get portraits of our zit-ridden faces laminated onto plastic cards that would give us the authority to cruise up and down Main Street and burn a little rubber without any adult supervision. The average 16-year-old boy in America would rather have his own set of wheels than make out with the captain of the varsity cheerleader squad. How can we desire a machine more than another human being? Every driving machine has a body, but for a cube of metal to become a living, breathing entity worthy of our passion, it must have a soul. So it is up to the maker of the machine to breathe life into its creation. The machine cannot say it's greater than the maker, nor can the maker say the machine is beneath him, because through the process, the two have
become one. 